Commerce Alive Today presents John Wanamaker. John Wanamaker was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1838. Due to a persistent cough he was unable to join the U.S. Army to fight in the American Civil War so instead started a career in business. In 1861 he and his brother-in-law Nathan Brown founded a men's clothing store in Philadelphia called Oak Hall. Wanamaker carried on the business alone after Brown's death in 1868. Eight years later Wanamaker purchased the abandoned Pennsylvania Railroad Station for use as a new larger retail location. The concept was to renovate the terminal into a grand depot similar to London's Royal Exchange or Paris's Le Halley's two central markets and forerunners of the modern department store that were well known in Europe at that time. The Wanamaker's Grand Depot opened in time to service the public visiting Philadelphia for the American Centennial Exposition of 1876 and in fact resembled one of the many pavilions at that World's Fair because of its fanciful new Moorish facade. In 1877 the interior of Wanamaker's was refurbished and expanded to include not only men's clothing but women's clothing and dry goods as well. This was Philadelphia's first modern-day department store and one of the earliest founded in America. A circular counter was placed at the center of the building and concentric circles radiated around it with 129 counters of goods. The store also accepted mail orders though it was not a large business until the early 20th century. Wanamaker first thought of how he would run a store on new principles when as a youth a merchant refused his request to exchange a purchase. A practicing Christian he chose not to advertise on Sundays. Before he opened his Grand Depot for retail business he let evangelist Dwight L. Moody use its facilities as a meeting place while Wanamaker provided 300 ushers from his store personnel. His retail advertisements the first to be copyrighted beginning in 1874 were factual and promises made in them were kept. Wanamaker guaranteed the quality of his merchandise in print allowed his customers to return purchases for a cash refund and offered the first restaurant to be located inside a department store. Wanamaker also invented the price tag. His employees were to be treated respectfully by management and John Wanamaker and Company offered its employees access to the John Wanamaker Commercial Institute as well as free medical care recreational facilities profit sharing plans and pensions long before these types of benefits were considered standard in corporate employment. Innovation and first smart Wanamakers, the store was the first department store with electrical illumination, first store with a telephone, and the first store to install pneumatic tubes to transport cash and documents. Wanamakers commissioned a Philadelphia-slash-New Jersey artist George Washington Nicholson, 1832-1912, to paint a large landscape mural The Old Homestead which was finished in March 1892. The 7x14-foot mural was still owned by Wanamakers in 1950 but has since passed into a private collection. In 1910 Wanamaker replaced his Grand Depot in stages, and constructed a new, purpose-built structure on the same site in Center City, Philadelphia. The new store, built in the Florentine style with granite walls by Chicago architect Daniel H. Burnham, had 12 floors numerous galleries and two lower levels totaling nearly 2 million square feet. The Palatial Emporium featured the Wanamaker organ the former St. Louis World's Fair pipe organ at the time one of the world's largest organs. The organ was installed in the store's marble-clad central atrium known as the Grand Court. Another item from the St. Louis Fair in the Grand Court is the large bronze eagle which quickly became the symbol of the store and a favorite meeting place for shoppers. All one had to say was meet you at the eagle and everyone knew where to go. The store was dedicated by President William Howard Taft on December 13, 1911.
Despite its size the organ was deemed insufficient to fill the grand court with its music, Wanamaker's responded by assembling its own staff of organ builders and expanding the organ several times over a period of years. The Wanamaker organ is the largest fully operational pipe organ in the world with some 28,750 pipes. It is famed for the delicate orchestra-like beauty of its tone as well as its incredible power. The organ still stands in place in the store today and free recitals are held twice every day except Sunday. Visitors are also invited to tour the organ's console area and meet with staff after recitals. Once a year usually in June Wanamaker Organ Day is held which is a free recital which lasts most of the day. News of the Titanic sinking was transmitted to Wanamaker's wireless station in New York City and given to anxious crowds waiting outside yet another first for an American retail store. Public Christmas caroling in the store's grand court began in 1918. In 1919 El Mundo a Spanish newspaper said of its New York store that it was 100 special departments all under one roof including the Department of Personal Service for Latin Americans. Other innovations included employing buyers to travel overseas to Europe each year for the latest fashions, the first white sale, and other themed sales such as the February Opportunity Sales to keep prices as low as possible while keeping volume high. The store also broadcast its organ concerts on the Wanamaker-owned radio station WOO beginning in 1922. Under the leadership of James Bayard Woodford, Wanamaker's opened piano stores in Philadelphia and New York that did a huge business with an innovative fixed-price system of Sales. Salons in period decor were used to sell the higher price items. Wanamaker also tried selling small organs built by the Austin Organ Company for a time. After John Wanamaker's death in 1922 the business carried on under Wanamaker family ownership. Rodman Wanamaker John's son enhanced the reputation of the stores as artistic centers and temples of the beautiful offering imported luxuries from around the world. After his death in 1928 the stores continued to thrive for a time. The men's clothing and accessories department was expanded into its own separate store on the lower floors of the Lincoln Liberty Building two doors down on Chestnut Street in 1932. This building which also had had a private apartment for the Wanamaker family on its top floor was sold to Philadelphia National Bank in 1952 the initials on the building's crown read PNB until November 2014 even though the bank no longer existed PNB was acquired by Core States which was then acquired by First Union which was rebranded as Wachovia Bank after acquiring Wachovia Corporation and later acquired by Wells Fargo and Company over time Wanamaker's lost business to other retail chains including Bloomingdale's and Macy's in the the Philadelphia market. The Wanamaker Family Trust finally sold John Wanamaker and Company with its under-patronized stores to Los Angeles, California-based Carter Holly Hale Stores for 60 million US dollar cash in 1978. Carter Holly Hale poured another 80 million dollars into renovating the stores but to no avail customers had gone elsewhere in the intervening decades and did not come back. Finally, in 1986 the now 15-store chain was sold to Woodward and Lothrop owned by Detroit's hopping mall magnate A. Alfred Taubman. Taubman reorganized the business with a shortened corporate name, Wanamakers Incorporated, and poured millions more into store renovations and public relations campaigns. This too was no help as Taubman's retail interests were heavily in debt and the store's combined sales were a disappointment. Believing that the Wanamaker building space was more valuable than portions of the historic Wanamaker store the Philadelphia Philadelphia flagship store was reduced to its first five stories, the Juniper Street side became the lobby of an office building for the upper stories and the former basement budget downstairs store became a parking garage, the Crystal Tea Room restaurant was closed and eventually leased to the Marriott Corporation for use as a ballroom, personal effects of Mr. Wanamaker from his until then preserved office on the 8th floor and the store archives were donated to the Historical Society of Pennsylvania, beloved huge Easter paintings of the trial and passion of the Christ by Mihaly Munkoxy that had been personal favorites of Mr. Wanamaker and were displayed every year in the Grand Court during Lent were unceremoniously sold at auction. Woodward and Lothrop collapsed in bankruptcy filing for Chapter 11 on January 17, 
1994 and with it the Wanamaker stores which were sold to May Department Stores Company on June 21, 1995. Wanamaker's Incorporated was formally dissolved and operations were consolidated with May's Hex Division in Arlington, Virginia. After 133 consecutive years, the Wanamaker's name was removed from all stores and replaced with Hex. In 1997 May acquired Wanamaker's historic rival Strawbridge and Clothier and rebranded all Philadelphia area Hex locations with the Strawbridge's name. The Center City Hex, temporarily named Strawbridge's, was closed for a lengthy renovation and refurbishment that saw the former Wanamaker retail space reduced in size again to three floors and the former selling floors on the upper floors further subdivided into commercial office space. This was to prepare the way in 1997 for New York-based Lord & Taylor, another division of May department stores to open in the former Wanamaker's flagship in Center City, Philadelphia. In August 2006 the store was converted to Macy's operated by the Macy's East Division of Federated Department Stores Inc., now Macy's Incorporated, which acquired May in late 2005. The New York Wanamaker store on Broadway was replaced by Kmart by 1996. The store was not immune to the major change in retailing away from regional chains to national chains. The uniformity of brand offerings and the cost savings available to national chains all worked against the viability of the store as an independent personality although customers generally had a major say in determining store offerings and the magnificence of its commercial space did tend to cause it to be stocked with better offerings. Other retailers had also learned to offer goods with much smaller staff rosters. The ability of retailers to go national in office Opposition to regional tastes is still an experiment in progress with mixed results. The Wanamaker's flagship store with its famous organ and eagle from the St. Louis World's Fair was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1978. Retailers continue to reap significant monetary returns from the elegance of this unparalleled retail space. In 1992 a non-profit group the Friends of the Wanamaker Organ was founded to promote the preservation, restoration and presentation of the famous pipe organ. As a retail site the Philadelphia flagship store has proved quite profitable for later tenants Lord & Taylor and now Macy's. With a long tradition of parades and fireworks displays Macy's has taken a prominent civic role in fostering historic Wanamaker traditions, especially the Wanamaker organ and the holiday pageant of lights Christmas show. In 2008 Macy's celebrated its 150th birthday in the Philadelphia flagship store with a concert featuring the Wanamaker organ and the Philadelphia orchestra that attracted a capacity city audience. In 1956 the Philadelphia Wanamakers premiered a Christmas light show, a large musical and blinking light display several stories high viewable from several levels of the building but with the best viewing on the central ground floor. Its popularity with Philadelphia parents and children as well as tourists ensured a continuous run even after the building was sold to different business interests. For decades until 1994 the melodic baritone voice or narrator of the show was John Fursenda known to Philadelphia's for decades reporting the news on radio and television, as well as nationally known as the voice of NFL Films. NFL Films' Ed Saville referred to Fursenda as the voice of God his words mything and dramatic baritone delivery were highlights of the shows and did much to boost Fursenda's stock and mystique. Various announcers narrated the show between 1995 and 2005, beginning in 2000. 2006, under Macy's, Julie Andrews became the show's narrator. Also in 2006 the Santa Express train at the top of the Grand Court returned. In 2007 the entire Christmas light show was completely modernized and rebuilt by Macy's Parade Studio on new trusses with lighter materials and LED lighting. In 2008 a new and bigger magic Christmas tree with LED lights debuted. However due to safety concerns and logistical issues the dancing water fountains were retired and will not return. Us for their amazing two-day sale. Two days of exciting savings throughout the store. Don't miss it. Now through Thursday. Roll it. Here's your cue to save 15 to 50 percent. It's John Wanamaker's Thanksgiving sale. Wanamaker's, Wanamaker's. Choose picture.
your 15 to 50% savings in the holiday season's best throughout the store. John Wanamaker's Thanksgiving sale starts Friday. Don't miss the sale of plenty. 15 to 50% off at John Wanamaker's Thanksgiving sale. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.